Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. So growth versus burnout and how that involves Instagram. Right, so what is growth? Growth is about development and basically increasing yourself in an area or another. Whereas burnout is overworking yourself to the point where like you're mentally and physically collapsing. How does this now relate with Instagram as I've titled this video? Well, this relates with Instagram because a lot of the work that I do has to do with social media. So on social media, we could all understand how it's so easy to get carried away with comparing yourself to the other person or your peers or competitors because you're seeing that they're doing better than you because they've got more followers or they're getting more likes for similar type of content that you're putting out this was one area that really caused me to get quite stressful and burnt out in the sense that i could see the content that i was putting out there and it was definitely on par with others but for some reason i wasn't getting the reception and that was really frustrating so what did i do i went out and did some research into ways that i could improve my engagement and get better interaction from people so in doing this research i found so many articles from like social media experts and marketing people that were advising on the following bad things and i could Call them bad because really and truly they are your content should speak for itself if your work really is good and of good quality people will start to engage more and more you just have to stick with it it's frustrating because some people see immediate growth straight away but with others it can be a lot slower it doesn't mean that you're not doing well what you've got to do is keep working on your niche keep working on you and your content and sooner or later the results will start to come in so anyway back to the bad tips and advice that i found out through doing my research and as well as things that i also went on to implement to try and see if this could increase my growth right so the first bad piece of instagram advice is to post every single day so they say post every day to increase um, the amount of opportunities that your audience get to see you remaining relevant and constantly in their eyes so that they that could increase the chances of them engaging more of yourself. This may work for some people and there are some influencers or bloggers and people out there that post every day and it works well for them. But at the end of the day, that did not work for me, all right? I've got a full-time job. I don't have time to be posting every day. A lot of the social influencers out there that will post every day, this is their full-time gig. Do you know what I mean? Their full-time gig is to create content. So they have time. They've got seven days in a week if they choose to. They've got time to go out there, take the pictures, prepare them, edit them, and post them out on Instagram every single day. Whereas that may not necessarily be the position that you're in. It's definitely not the position I'm in where I have all the time in the world, basically, and can do what I want as and when I want to. I've got to think about the fact that I have a full-time job that I have to go to. So I can't try and compete with other people that although we are sort of in the same space, we're not in the same sort of like life cycle or working pattern if that makes sense. Bad advice number two is the follow for follow tactic. So this is the idea of going around, engaging with people's content and following them in the hopes that they will follow you back. Now, again, this may work for some people, but at the end of the day, it's time consuming, yeah? And there's no guarantee that the people that you're going around following will follow you back. So it's pretty pointless. And as well as that, these people that are following you back simply because you followed them, it doesn't mean they necessarily like your content or are going to engage with it. So again, it's just almost like those followers because they're not adding much value. And on platforms like Instagram and any social media, really, it's not just about having followers, but it's about having active followers that actually like and comment on your posts. So what's the point in getting people to follow you back who really aren't going to be doing much it's just a waste of time and a waste of space sorry if that came across rude but to be honest that's just pretty much where it is thankfully i didn't pay too much attention to this follow for follow idea because i just really saw it as pointless and also it's just long bad advice number three which i can say i'm happy i stayed clear away from is to join engagement groups or pods so basically this is where a group of like influencers or bloggers or whatever you want to title yourself they'll come together in a group and basically the agreement is that when one person in the group posts something on instagram you'll pounce on it yeah so you go like it straight away drop some comments all that kind of stuff basically and hype it up so that in return when you go and post your own content they'll do the same for you again this is similar to the follow for follow tactic this is not real engagement yes they will comment they will like so it's not like having ghost followers but at the same time these are people that are still within your niche or your area why get other people that are in your space to comment and like your stuff you need other people out there you need a general outside audience that are actually going to be influenced by what you are putting out there because at the end of the day your role is to be an influencer so for example if you're a fashion blogger what is the point of going to go and 
and join an engagement group whereby there are other fashion bloggers in the group and then they're the ones that will come and be engaging with your content doesn't make much sense right because it doesn't show that you have any influence it's just you guys following through with an agreement so again is this really helping your growth I don't think so. Bad advice number four is spending up to an hour on Instagram each and every day. This is on liking people's stuff. This is on commenting. Now, by no means am I saying that you should not engage with your audience and, you know, comment on people's things and like because at the end of the day, you want the same thing in return. But what is the point in dedicating 60 minutes in one day on Instagram doing this? Again, it's not going to guarantee you growth. You're going out there, you're over commenting, you're liking, but... Not everybody's necessarily going to see that you're doing this for them. So are they going to return the favour? No, again, not necessarily. And aside from that, it's just long. Like you could be spending time doing other things. If your content is that good, people will start to see it and they will appreciate it as and when they can. You can't force people into appreciating your content, which is why I say this whole idea of going out there and purposely saying, I'm going to spend this amount of time on the app to engage. I don't think it's right. It should be a genuine thing. And the main reason that I had an issue with this piece of advice is because it was taken away from my life. So firstly, okay, they say that 30 minutes before you post a picture on Instagram, you should go around, you know, liking similar people's content, commenting, all that kind of stuff. And then 30 minutes after that, you post your picture. And then again, you spend another 30 minutes on the app engaging with people as your content has just been put up. So basically, as people comment on your stuff, you reply straight away and you get the conversation going and that kind of stuff. Like, again, it is not bad to engage with your audience. Definitely do this because at the end of the day, they're the ones going to be supporting you. You want to come across as personable. You should be personable. But do not waste time on tactics, yeah? Let your content speak for you. The second reason I'm so against this piece of advice is because I spent quite a bit of time, I spent a fair few months following this tactic and I did not see any growth. So why am I doing it? It's just unpractical. And bad advice number five, although they didn't explicitly say to do this, is just generally spending a lot of time on the Instagram app. Like at the end of the day, there's so much more productive stuff that you could be doing off the app. And you should be investing more time into creating better content and just like improving yourself in general. Why sit on an app? It's not even giving you the results that you want. So in summarizing the lessons learned from following some of this bad Instagram advice out there, I found that it was causing me to stress. I was not enjoying myself and I was getting to a place where I was like, do I even still want to do this stuff? Do I still want to work in social media? Am I seeing the growth that I want? No. So I might as well stop, right? I might as well free up some time and invest that time in doing things that I actually want to do and things that will put me in a better position in life. The second thing that I found when I checked myself about all these tactics that I was following was the fact that I was trying to compete in an area or space that wasn't necessarily my niche or my thing. So don't get me wrong. I love fashion. I love clothes. I love getting dressed up and, you know, pairing up different combinations. But that is not fully me. That is not the true picture of Abigail or Abby or Abs, whatever you call me. I don't just want to talk about fashion or do videos about fashion and style. I'm the kind of person that is a lot more concerned about setting myself up for the future, working on things that are going to better my life, bring me more money and allow me to be financially free. I want to work on creating multiple streams of passive income for myself. This is why I've started to share with you guys things like my house purchase journey and how I've decided to become a landlord rather than moving into the house and um, unconventional ways of making money and just basically ways that we can really like set ourselves up and establish ourselves so that as young people we can see that there are other ways that we can go about living our lives that we don't need to be tied to no nine to five job and you know depend on that to be our only source of income no that doesn't need to be us and that is what i'm concerned about which is why even while i was focusing on all the fashion stuff my angle was affordable fashion and affordable ways to style yourself and not break the bank that kind of thing because at the end of the day my main goal is to save and invest rather than spending 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 on clothes so anyway i hope that gives you more insight to myself as an individual as well as either idea of finding your niche i feel that finding your niche and honing in on who you truly are on instagram is so important and so crucial to your growth especially where certain areas are so saturated that it's going to be hard for you to make a name unless you're one of the established sort of founders of that area and i'm glad to say that i feel that you guys are definitely responding a lot better to my content now because i'm showing you what's real i'm showing you what i found useful for my life and i think which 
which is what has caused some of you to engage more with me because I feel like you can see that I'm sharing this stuff because it can also be useful to you. I've now also stopped competing myself with peers or competitors because at the end of the day, we're all on different paths. I'm doing my thing, they're doing their thing. Yeah, their stuff may be getting a bit more engagement initially, but my time will come. As long as I remain on track and consistent, listen, it will all come to pass. I will achieve my goals and that's what I think people need to remember and keep at the forefront of their minds rather than all these silly little Instagram antics to increase your growth. I'm now letting my content speak for me and have created my own content posting schedule so rather than trying to post every day because this is what they're telling me to do I'm posting like maybe three or four times on Instagram because that's manageable for me and I feel that it's working I'm seeing better growth from it anyway. I also have a lot more time to now focus on more productive tasks more time to focus on creating better content which I feel that I am doing so you guys let me know am I creating better content am I creating more things that you like I'm able to read more do more research and just basically set myself up better as an individual I'm invested in myself and my knowledge and understanding of things in the world that are going to help me get to where I need to be so in summary in doing all these things one finding my niche two stopped competition with others and three focusing on a more productive task for myself i found that my growth has increased i'm getting more followers on a daily basis i'm getting more likes more comments and people are genuinely engaging with my content which is at the end of the day what you need i'm building my community of more genuine followers and people that are interested in what i'm doing and what i have to offer so on that note i'm gonna wrap this up guys i hope you find this video useful and i hope that it's possibly giving you a reality check if you are somebody that is currently following some of the bad instagram advice out there let your content speak for you don't become stressed and burnt out because of social media follow your path be true to yourself and the people will come so anyway let me know what you think down in the comments let's get the conversation going guys and i'll catch you in my next video bye